All right, lads, welcome back. Tarts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod. In this video, we shall be exploring the Smota Tree of the West Siberian People's Republic. It's actually funny, this is the second time I tried to record this video. I assumed that uh, Tumen's Tree, well, we'll use the old name for brevity. Um, I assumed that Tumen's Smota Tree would be the exact same as every, as every other one, you know. Folks are not complete, you get the, you get the Smota Tree, but no. Instead, we got a... Um, countdown timer and because to be fair Tumans 3 probably is the exact same as the other ones just with the with the addition of the the uh, the timer but um, of course because I've been focused on auto completing all of the focuses um, I had to basically just do it naturally so as you can see we're in the 20th of September 1962 I, I, I intended to just focus on auto complete and get straight into this mother tree but that's not a that's not a thing because we have this so what are you gonna do and once it breaks we shall be free we shall break free rather just been building up the old army, producing all sorts of lovely equipment. Have a hell of a lot of men in training. Have a hell of a lot of men in the field. 72,000 in the field, 84,000 in training. Once this expires, we shall get the smutter tree. So give it to me. I'm ready. Alright, there we are. Lay it on me. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oops. We will. Yeah. Oops. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Focus tree unlocked. Alright, we shall call forth a new congress. Oh, whoops, I forgot I had that thing now. I did the exact same thing in the, uh, in the Makovsky, uh, Smota Tree exploration video. Slightly turned on this music, it's a bit too loud. Now, call forth a new congress. Petty party politics distract from the happenings around us as the treasonous warlords of West Siberia mobilize. If the West Siberian People's Republic is to be restored, let alone the Soviet Union, the inter-party bickering must be put to rest. The leaders of the two main cliques, uh, Chairman Kaganovich and Khrushchev, must, and with, uh, without the H there, must settle their and their followers' differences as such a new party congress will be called. I'm slightly turned up again. If... No. The Congress will help focus the party's vision and bring its disparate wings together, but beneath that deals will be, will be made. Threats delivered and bribes taken as Kaganovich and Khrushchev jostle. Okay, I didn't spell it with the H the second time. Is that, is that how you wrote it with it? Okay, yeah, you spelled it with the H here. Mm, that's interesting. Um, jostled for influence. Relations between the two men are still somewhat amicable, but time will tell how long this lasts. Gets from distant discourse. Retract, uh, subtract civilian chaos and minus 40. Prevent chaos from spreading. Prove our victories. Why can't... Oh. That's interesting. Why can't we attack Sverdlovsk? Sverdlovsk, yeah. By the way... We shall go for the Black League. Get Ivan in charge, as well as Ivan Fedyaninsky. Get on the border of the Black League. Now we should be getting hit with an event soon enough. Here we are. Dissonant discourse. Noises echoed through the halls of a government bunker in Tumen. Outside the doors of one empty room, muffled sounds could be heard from two men. Suddenly the door came flying open as the two men, alongside their shouting, erupted into the room. Bah, we've been over this, Khrushchev. Uh, okay, again, okay, okay, again without the H. Third time without the H. I've always seen it spelled with the H. Anyway. Need to focus on the military for the upcoming war. The economy is important, but a new economic plan like yours isn't going to help. It will in the long term, Kaganovich Khrushchev retorted. A new economic policy would help revitalize our agriculture and civil industry. We need to build on what we have now and support our people. Uh, broad, bold new plans are what will help the economy the most. If we support the civilian economy, the military will follow alongside. Ah, uh, yes, a civilian economy does sound nice. I'm sure the bombs overhead right now or the raiding parties in our borders would agree with your assessment. Kaganovich shot back sarcastically. Wake up, Khrushchev. Okay, fourth time. We are at war. A new, e a new economic policy won't help when we 
need artillery and guns. Neither will a military build-up. Khrushchev responded, exasperated. Oh, sure, it might help now, but we'll be left with a great deal of industry in hands with nothing to do when this is all over. Besides, where exactly are you going to store all this equipment without it getting blown up by one of those damn bombs? One of these damn bombs. Armies are only as healthy as their soldiers. Things like agriculture, like food, are important. Khrushchev's last retort only caused their debate to flare up again, back and forth the two bickered. Now thinking of dragging some unfortunate party members into the discussion at its current point, however, the debate was far from over. This continued for another two hours. It's interesting that Khrushchev is, is, is allowed to address Kaganovich just by calling him Kaganovich. Um, instead of, you know, Secretary General, General Secretary, something like that. This continued for another two hours. Political power, yeah, political power plus 20. Gain base stability plus 3%. Now, what is the five-year plan? Gets into great... <laughs> A great leap forward. The necessary preparations for the five-year plans were made prior, but this will, uh, thus we will initiate the plans in better condition than if we didn't. Activate the mission, the five-year plan. The cost to complete the chaos is, is affecting us. Mission will change by plus 20 physical power. And uh, the cost to complete all the occupation decisions will be multiplied by 110%. Beneath layers of concrete in a deep, dark, and dank bunker, party members you reunite. Their conversations are occasionally interrupted as the whole room jitters and the legacy of lost wars linger. Uh, and, uh, and the legacy of lost wars lingers. A far cry... Far cry from the halls of Moscow, but it has to make do if the Red Party has any hope of returning there. There were many items on the agenda that would shape the future of the People's Republic. Questions of the budget, promotions and appointments, however, to open the Congress was a, was a most important and pressing question. What is the five-year plan? We shall tell you. Hmm. Let me see it. There it is. Very nice. Seems like it's the same thing. So I will just keep going. Oh. No. Now a great leap forward. Mikhail expected his brother's five year plan to be long, expansive and deeply thorough, and after placing the five hundred page book tam. Down on the desk during a meeting with both the chairman and Khrushchev, he had to admit, okay, now we now, we've, now we have it with the hedge. It was those things and more, so he said his stoic tone hiding the enthusiasm Mikhail knew Lazar was experiencing. What do you think? Mikhail looked at it. This reminds me of the fucking, um, oh, it's the, the Patrick Bateman, where he's showing off the business card. Um, Mikhail looked at Khrushchev and Khrushchev to him. There was a moment of silence as the two waited for the other to begin and to the happiness of Mikhail won the contest. I think it's a good start. Focusing on rebuilding our industrial base would be our first priority and I think the policies will do good towards that front. Mikhail held his breath as Khrushchev extrapolated, stating some problems which, for the most part, Kaganovich took considerably well. Perhaps it was the light way Khrushchev delivered it or perhaps Kaganovich was in a particularly good mood regardless when it was Mikhail's turn his side and decided to give it straight chairman. I'm afraid that I must differ on this matter with Comrade Khrushchev. It was ten minutes later that after Mikhail began his criticisms that his monologue ended. For several moments his brother said nothing, didn't even move sitting there like he was a mannequin. Then he began speaking. You made some good points, Comrade Kaganovich said, Mikhail noticing the way his teeth grinded behind his straight face, but you underestimate the damage that Bukharin's policies have done to this country. This will eliminate the NEP in its degenerative form and begin economic development necessary for a transition from public controlism to redism. Your concerns, I'm afraid, are outvoted by the majority. Yes, the majority of one, of course, Chairman Kaganovich. Him saying that you've been, you know, you've been outvoted by the majority, it just, it just, it just reeks of the ratio plus L plus didn't ask and just that thing. Ah, oh, that's so funny. Below its feet lays. Nikita Khrushchev gained silent workhorse. Uh, daily political power gained plus 0.15. Re uh, resource gain efficiency plus 10%. Lazar Kaganovich gains red intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> Intellectual. Oh my god. The man could barely write. Political power gain plus 5%. Acceptance of red diplomacy plus 25. Add civilian chaos plus 30. Our administrative efficiency will begin to worsen, decrease political parties, one party state policy effectiveness. The second question facing our movement is where to focus the state's economic priorities. For Chairman Kaganovich, the answer is simple.
When his folks are working on Russia's natural resources all across Russia, there remains an un uh, enormous untapped mineral wealth that is waiting to be extracted. We could build mines and plants to extract these assets and sell them for the betterment of the state. For Khrushchev, fucking hell, Khrushchev is getting his shit misspelled all over the place. He sees more opportunity in focusing on projects that better the public. He would focus us on building housing projects and improving state infrastructure. He would have us refining resources that exist into usable materials that can benefit all citizens of the Soviet Union. There's no event for that? No, good. Now... In its hands, or in, in its hand rests, gets went savage squabbling, add civilian chaos, plus 35, damn, all these events are added, adding civilian chaos. Subtract military supplies, minus 35%, political power, plus 35. The question of whether to balance the five-year plan and the broader economy, or on the civilian or military sectors, divide the party. Chairman Kaganovich is convinced of the need to focus on the military, arguing that civilian industry is pointless if it cannot be defended from the traitors who have fractured West Siberia. The chairman reminds the party of the land the Republic has lost, and what industry that could they could regain that could support both our people and military. Investment... Investments in the civilian sector are favoured by Cruz. Oh my god, his name is getting misspelled all over the place. That's hilarious. Good enough for him, though. He asks what the point of a strong military is if we cannot support the people of Tumen and of the land which we will soon reclaim. As he notes how, how a strong populace is needed to support the military, which of the two men's division will succeed, may decide the fate of Russia. You guys are taking your... We shall occupy Omsk. Occupy the Black League, rather. Oh, we can go straight after the uh, Zatoos Republic, of course. Because we're not, um... Hmm, interesting. So, yeah, we didn't have this this decision before, I don't think. Do we have to knock out Omsk first? There is. Now, savage squabbling. A Soviet bureaucrat strolled down the halls of a government bunker. To his right, he heard shouting coming from a closed door. Familiar sound these days. Stopping briefly, the bureaucrat eavesdropped to get at the topic. Huh? Agriculture, he thought to himself before resuming his walk to avoid any trouble. Again with the Virgin Lands. Ah, the Virgin Lands program. Well, if you don't know, was a program that Khrushchev in our own timeline implemented. Um, basically in undeveloped previously undeveloped agricultural regions. A lot of it was in northern Kazakhstan. And it went well for a few years. It did. But then it kind of never really got the same result that it did in those few years, and then so that's so it's viewed, viewed as a failure, basically. Um, Kaganovich let out an annoyed sigh. You are so caught up with this project of yours that you keep ignoring the reality of the situation. We have limited resources, resources that can be better spent uh, across other, uh, better spent spread across other issues. Kaganovich pinched the bridge of his nose in frustration. But does agriculture not merit that sort of attention? Khrushchev gathered his, uh, just with his hand to, to, to Kaganovich. These projects will create food and jobs which will help good people both in and out of the army. People are starving right now in agricultural projects of some form. Now, where was I? Uh, of, some fo of some form are non-negotiable. He raised an eyebrow, hoping he convinced his pig-headed colleague of something for once in his miserable life. Are there not better ways of doing that, though? We, sh uh, we should focus agricultural reforms on improving the land we already have. Besides, it's risky. Output fluctuates between the years. Yeah, it, 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 that's exactly what happened. G uh, Kaganovich closed his eyes and let out a long, exhausted sigh. Look, I know I'm arguing with a brick wall, but at some point we will have to come to an agreement for the good of the party. Khrushchev relaxed his shoulders and nodded his head. He hated to admit it, but Kaganovich was right on this occasion. Fair enough, we need to choose something. How about we drink on that for the party? Kaganovich was not about to turn down a drink, but before he could respond, Khrushchev had already poured out two shots. The two took the drinks and made a toast to close out their unusually productive discussion for the party. Why are these all pictures of American bombers? This the, uh, That isn't the new paratroopers, is it? God, I hope not. Um, prove our victories. Yeah. And prevent chaos from spreading. I don't seem to do this now. I'm 
many divisions do you have? I shouldn't have bothered doing this. I'm gonna knock out Threadlovsk first anyway. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, very good. Now, I assume this is the exact same event as always. I'm not really sure, to be completely honest. Now, a land of steel. Gets spent digging for victory at military supplies. Oh, perfect. Plus 40%. At the uh, Tumen gets the production of eight uh, steel and eight aluminium. Aluminium. Uh, highly increases political parties one party state policy effectiveness. After much discussion, Chairman Kaganovich's arguments have triumphed, as we always knew they would. Already the state is mobilizing to realize his plans. Mines will be reopened. New workers will be recruited to retrieve the Union's mineral wealth. Oh, excuse me. The bounty of Russia's natural splendor will soon be in our hands. Ah, fantastic. Digging for victory, clink, the sound of a pick striking stone echoed through the rest of the mine. Clink, Alec wiped the sweat off his brow. Uh, where was I? Uh, the work was exhausting and thankless, but satisfying for the miner. Clink, smashing open another clump of rock, Alec appeared into its contents. Down nothing again, Alec sighed uh, disappointedly. He marked off a spot on a piece of paper he kept inside his pocket. Scratching his head, he tapped a point on the paper with his pencil. Guess I'll try site 47. Further into the mine I go. Delving deeper, the air began to thin as the surface grew more distant. The room was, was sweltering as the rock walls trapped the heat inside. Opened by the state, the copper mine provided materials for ammunition and limited electronics, something Alec was well aware of when he volunteered for the job. As grueling as the work was, it was something he he had grown to appreciate he had come wanting to serve his country in his own way over time he realized that everyone was in this war together and he had their part to play slaving in the mines was his and he was proud to give his part for victory arriving at site 47 alec took a deep breath before striking again at the rock around him initially the stone around him seemed just as disappointing as the last spot however just when he was about to give up a final strike revealed a deep vein limiting or lining the wall in front of him a white toothy grin appeared on his face jackpot he shouted into the cave before dropping uh, the pick in his arms each worker is drawn soldier again another american bomber what What's the crack? I assume that's an American bomber. Whenever I see bombs being dropped, and it's, and, it, and it's not a black and white photograph, I assume it's an American bomber. So steel it shall bring forth. The cost to complete the chaos is affecting us. Mission will change by minus 10 plus the power. 250% research bonuses for resource excavation technology. Our administrative efficiency will begin to rapidly improve. The mining operations are moving quickly. Extracting ore that our factories quickly process into steel. These assets are transforming our infrastructure, our armies, and our economy. They are making us stronger than ever before. Beyond these material improvements, the source of much of the strength is knowledge itself. Every day we gain useful experience on what works and what does not. We can refine our techniques to extract even more resources from the land. And soon it shall give us all her treasures. Ha! The Khrushchevka program. Um, it would have been cool if it was called the... Uh, oh no. Would it be the Kaganovichovka pro program or something? Not too sure. But we're building those, you know, the Soviet... The, the stereotypical com blocks is there. Derogatorily referred to as... Now, the home of the revolution gets spent in the halls of the proletariat at the Khrushchevka program, which grants monthly population plus 3%. Need to consume goods minus 10%. Subtract civilian chaos, uh, minus 50, that's nice. Chile Bins gets one military base, one administrative office, and two building slots. Yeah.
After much discussion, Comrade Khrushchev's arguments of trying to wage a total war against poverty and against class itself. Very soon, all differences will be eliminated and we shall draw together all nations, classes and peoples into a reborn USSR. The first step in this movement is addressing the state of housing for too many conditions are abysmal. Most workers do not live in safe, well-maintained abodes. Access to portable water and reliable electricity remains low. Uh, we must undertake a massive construction project to build apartments across the Union. These Khrushchevkas, as some bureaucrats call them, will guarantee that all, whether they are workers or soldiers, have basic shelter. Nice. And com blocks get a lot of shit, but I'd much rather live in a com block than be homeless. Like, much rather. Not even close. Go in, I want to I want to do stuff. Zoom in. There we are. Another American bomber. Ah, oh, yeah, it's the new paratroopers. Bye bye. Now occupy the Ural military district. Send a proposal to the free aviators. Attack the thief territory of Yugra. Oh, cool. Vorkuta's uh, capital is all the way over here now. I think it used to all be all the way up there. Nice. Now, in the halls of the proletariat, Tuman was immersed in an unnatural calm as early morning darkness enveloped the city. In a squat uh, apartment complex, Katia fumbled with her keys as she tried unlocking the door, or as she tried locking the door behind her. The new government housing was cheap, but took time adjusting to her, her new factory job and necessitated an early start, and that meant stumbling through the building's darkness. While hurrying to the stairs, Katia found herself ramming into something. Pain and confusion were replaced with annoyance as she realized she had bumped into the rare individual also awake this hour before she could chew into him. Though they turned around. Oh, it's Rakasovsky. I hate. I don't like the kill. Also, we, we, we never got the event of killing Yazov. I feel like a lot has been removed in this mutter. Um, and now where was I? Before she could chew into them, though, they turned around to reveal themselves as a soldier. Katia's blood turned cold as she quickly tried to stammer out an apology. I'm su sorry, sir. Or, or I'm su sorry, su sir. Katia started out in a panic. I didn't see you in the darkness. I hope you're all right. Uh, say what brings you out here so early in the morning. My name's Katya, by the way. The dead bad expression of the soldier had turned into wide-eyed concern. Please, there's no need to apologize. It's not like the apartment building makes navigation easy with the lights always off. He laughed at, the, at his quip. What brings you out so early? Um, oh, and call me Clement. I'm not on duty, so there's no need for the formalities. With Clement's casual turn, Katya began to relax a little. Uh, with her response. Some more uh, back and forth later and a pleasant conversation had blossomed between the two. It turned out the two were even neighbours. However, their conversation could not last forever and they were forced to stop lest they be late. Still, as both walked their jobs, they were filled with a previously unseen conviction that they lacked until that point. This is why we work, yes. That we can bump into each other on the stairs and have a blossoming conversation. Another American bomber. Maybe it's a German bomber. That's three engines on one side. Maybe, maybe it's a Soviet bomber. Oh, not too sure. Now, let us get more AKs. Or maybe... E no, that's fine, that's fine. Alrighty. And her soul, its people. 
The cost to complete all the occupation decisions will be multiplied by 60%. That's really nice. 250% resource bonuses for electronics. Uh, manpower plus 5,000. Svartlovs gets one level of hospitals and as well as a school and two building slots. But it's not enough, is it? We cannot address the human condition with tile and concrete. Our union must always must be always looking forward towards the future, towards the policies that will allow the people to transcend current limitations. The best way to achieve that goal is by investing in research. Best way to achieve that goal is by investing in research. We can use that money that we gain through our mineral wealth today to find new opportunities tomorrow. The more advanced our union is, the better equipped it will be to protect and provide for workers in the future. The Air Force returned. The wind will whisper in the night, which is come. Yes, that's a very good song. Very nice. Yeah, I knew I clicked that. Good. Now the hammer. We will move onwards with Kaganovich's vision of the five-year plan. This will put a toll on agricultural strain. Yeah, that, that, that's the same event as always. Yeah, that's nice. Now we do have an air force, so let us use it. With Kaganov's vision of the five year plan, this will put a toll on agricultural strain, add a military supplies plus 50%, command power plus 40. Whether it was through his better rhetoric, oration, or veiled threats, Kaganovich has convinced most of the party to support his plan for an emphasis on a militaristic and heavier industry. Um, those farms that have not yet been collectivized will be, in order to feed our growing war machine, other farms will be seized in their land use to construct industrial centers that will initially support, sustain, and expand themselves. In the future, their mighty production lines will be turned to face outwards as they manufacture the equipment the army will use to strike at the hearts of those who abandoned the Soviet Union, and one day the German menace itself. Now, what's this about? I think this is new. Training on the border. Report to XX, so on and so forth. From Patrol Group 20. Dates last time, XX, 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 interaction, covert observation. Details earlier this, sir, earlier this morning, Private X uh, called into base, reporting unknown activity on the border with the Ural Mountains. The scout attached was dispatched who confirmed the private report. A large group of unmarked soldiers had camped near X Woods for what appeared to be a military exercise. They shot at target dummies from a range of 400 meters and practiced hand-to-hand -hand combat within one with one another in the in the evening. It is my firm belief that this was not another roving band of mercenaries, as these soldiers ex exemplified discipline, but... Uh, but most importantly, wielded modern weaponry. Private X had flanked uh, this group, hoping to spy on it from the other side of the forest. Although I cannot confirm his reports, he swears that he also saw a fully functioning tank, maybe used some trucks hidden in the foliage. Whatever the case, sir, these soldiers looked more than ready for war. Who can even afford a tank that here? Useless. Gain base ability minus 5%. Slightly increases military training, basic training, policy effectiveness, and uh, military supervision rules of engagement policy effectiveness as well. Is that, for, is that supposed to be for Amsk? No, 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 I said, said the Ural Mountains. Must have been a magnetic forest thing. the enemies of the revolution. Get to a stomach for war, the military uh, supplies weekly gain will change by plus 1% becoming plus 4%.
increases minimal investments in army funding, our military professionalism will begin to rapidly improve. Gained base conflict support plus 5%. The fracturing, of West si the fracturing of West Siberia has left our military in a sorry state, particularly with much of the Red Army mutinying and forming the military council in Svartlovsk, Rokosovsky, Batov, Karbyshev, and the rest of their forces are traitors, but their absence has left a large hole within the army. The revolution cannot succeed without an effective fighting force, so this hole must be filled. The Republic is in need of more patriots who are willing to support the revolution. As such, we will disseminate propaganda throughout the nation, instilling a sense of Soviet patriotism within the people and showing them the, the depravity of our enemies. Upon learning these truths, surely men will once more flock to the Red Banners. Hmm. While the frigid north is controlled by Bloken and his gang of jailers, perhaps they can be convinced to join us considering our men's power in the region. We'll do that now. Yes, yes, sir. A stomach for war in a desolate and forgotten corner of western Siberia, a village of wood and brick with fields of farmland surrounding it. A few sorry homes. A few sorry homes were old relics that housed sorry people long forgotten by the world except for those who wished to hurt them. A thin older man ran across the town down the one dot road that connected to the outside world from the little wooden town hall. He beelined for a small, dilapidated home not his own. Despite its unlit windows, he knew the person he was looking for was inside, sitting with nothing better to do. Golga, have you seen this recent pamphlet? He asked, handing it to him. I think I found uh, I found some money now that we've lost our farms. The propaganda handed to him was from the Revolutionary Army in Tumen. It espoused the benefit of joining the army. Liberating Russia and serving the revolution. And most importantly to Gog was the prospect of making money. Gog was filled with mixed emotions. This was the same group that had acquired his farm and destroyed his livelihood. Then again, he needed to put food on the table. This was a means of doing so. After some back and forth, he made up his mind. I suppose it's an option, he sighed. Then again, there aren't many of those left. Guess it's time to go find a recruiter. I assume you'll be coming along as well, Kolia. Kolia nodded along before they both headed out of the building and back to the town hall. The return was much slower, though. Both men now mel uh, both men now melancholy. I was about to... Well, I saw that word. I immediately thought of Megamind, where he pronounces uh, he pronounces as um, he pronounces this as melancholy. That's it, instead of melancholy. That this may be the last time they see their town. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Our response from Bloken. Bloken has thankfully obliged our invitation of peaceful integration. They shall save us the constant times of marching across the northern Urals to seize the fiefdom by force. Valuable lives have also been saved through this integration of the region into our administration. Shall begin effective immediately, securing our northern frontier. We are one step close to a unified motherland without a drop of blood spilled. One bloody battle fewer. We annex them. We get a core on them. Our administrative efficiency will passively improve. Do we get their units? No. That's annoying. By the way, we have cores on them. That's all that really matters. Saren, Paul... Yeah, they, they didn't have that. They just had Rokuta. That's fair enough. Rokuta Gulag's captured. Fantastic. Now, and brings us to the modern era. Gets went an ode to old friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get you. Under Silly Kuznetsov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saren Paul gets an increase to its state GDP of 200 million. Saren Paul is the one which is you. Which one is it, you? Yeah. So currently it doesn't have anything. Currently it has. Oh, wait, what? Is that because it's not a clue? Oh, yeah, I forgot to occupy them. Whoops. Occupy the thief territory of Yugra. Whoops. How about now? Okay, still nothing. It says available state GDP 880 million, but it says zero. Okay, so that's getting an increase with state GDP of 200 million, which is a rather large increase. Uh, add, the, add the production of one grid power in Saren Paul. Our GDP growth will increase by 2%. Our inflation will increase by 1.5%. Much of our industry lies dormant. The terror bombings have gotten factories and workers have become disconnected. Interesting that we only need 30% to go after the two, Steve. Reasonably large power. Now, where was I? 
Uh, the tower bombings have gutted factories and workers have become disconnected from the chaos within cities and returned to their agrarian roots. These trends must be reversed if we were to have any hope of restoring what was lost. All should be dedicated to the growth of industry. Anything uh, must be centralized where possible. Consumer goods and industry will be discouraged to focus on what's essential for the nation's survival. Now, a note to old friends. In an upscale room of a bunker, stuffy wooden furniture surrounded the man who was mentally human. Yet the man in question presently looks nothing like the calm and calculated Soviet bureaucrat one would expect. Zach Kaganovich walked about the room with his hat tossed aside and beads of sweat rolling down his forehead. Kaganovich stumbled his way to an inconspicuous cabinet and pulled out a bottle of vodka alongside two shot glasses. He shuffled his way back to his desk where he effortlessly uncorked the bottle and poured its contents. One glass was put in front of him and the other opposite um, his side of the desk. This ritual was something he did before meetings back with his friend Stalin. Oh, how he missed the man Kaganovich thought to himself. In public, he was often intimidating and silly, but in private, he had a humorous side, if you saw. Back when they were subverting Bukharin, he recalled an episode with the air services weather forecasters where he suggested they report the opposite to improve their accuracy. Unfortunately for him, this, his time would have to be cut short, else he would uh, be later, or, or else he would be later than he already was to the meeting. In an instant, the shot in front of Kaganovich was quickly disappeared before being slammed down on the desk, leaving in a hurry, he left the vodka to be cleaned up when he got back. The second shot remained untouched on the table. Now, that is all fine. Now, and it's proud sons add military supplies plus 40%, army experience as well as air experience plus 40. Uh, increases military training, basic training, policy effectiveness. 1,000 units of infantry equipment, 250 units of support as well as anti-tank equipment are added to the national stockpile. Despite all the debates and disagreements, we have done the work. We have laid the foundations for a strong state that can meet the challenges ahead. Both Kaganovich and Khrushchev have silenced their remaining concerns and are prepared to lead the union into a new age full of new struggles and challenges. <laughs> First and most important of these challenges, both agree our military all around us. There are traders of the Union determined to crush the last great hope for redism anywhere. We must improve our army and give it an edge in the fights to come. The only question is whether we pursue Chairman Kaganovich's proposal for a primarily offensive force or Khrushchev's defensive one. Is there an event with that? No. No. I think that's Bloken symbol, is it not? His ideology symbol, I think. Might, have, might be. Cast it off their velvet gloves. We'll move onwards with Kaganovich's vision of the five-year plans. We'll put a total eye on agricultural strain, replace Khrushchev influence plan with a combined vision. Effective change, daily political power gain minus 0.1, monthly population minus 2%, stability plus 10%, production efficiency cap plus 3%, and division attack and defense plus 5% each. Gain based conflict support plus 40%, and offensive force is the obvious answer to this question. After all, how can we re-establish order by only defending what we hold? We will retreat into hovels and try to shut out the world, or will we retreat into hovels and try to shut out the world as it passes, uh, as it passes us by? Will we wait until the reactionaries and deviationists have amassed armies great enough to destroy us? Clearly turning defensive is absurd. Chairman Kaganovich has laid out a masterful argument. Under his leadership, we will reorient our we will orient our policies to pursue aggression. Our revolutionary army will advance, spreading public controlism across Russia once again. Now is the time for redism. Now is the time for the Soviet Union. Now, that is the five-year plan. Gets them at the end of the beginning. Political power plus 100, our, uh, plus 100. Our industrial equipment and industrial expertise will begin to rapidly improve. Replace a combined vision with a unity five-year plan. Effective change, daily political power gain, minus 0 0.05. Monthly population plus 2%. Stability plus 5%. Construction speed plus 10%. And production efficiency cap plus 2%. It's been a long road full of controversy, but at long last the room has gone silent. There are no more arguments to be settled, nor and or any fights to be had. The five year plan has been completed, it is done. It would be a mistake to say this process was easy. It would equally be a mistake to pretend as though the there were not um 
as though there were not those nursing private grievances. But publicly, uh, yeah, it would be a mistake to pretend as though there were not those nursing private uh, private grievances. But publicly, all are content. It is time to begin the work of implementing the, of implementing the plan, and at long last, decide on who should ultimately lead our union. Eight point five six million people. I was nasty even a bit quite a bit earlier though. The Shadow of Giants. There we are. That's also an old one, I think. Now, at the end of the beginning, Kiganovich stood inside his office with two aides behind him. He checked his wrist for the time as he waited out, uh, as he waited for his tortoise paced colleague to arrive five minutes. Where could he possibly be? Just as Kiganovich mumbled those words, he heard the sound of the door opening, and his associate Khrushchev walked through the door. The two men smiled at each other before removing the hats and stepping closer. Khrushchev spoke with an unusual calm that possessed neither anger nor defeat. I'll admit, I had my doubts, and I still do. But what has been agreed upon is what's best for the party and nation at this point. Only time will tell its success or failure. He cleared his throat, and before resuming, after all, there are, um, there are bigger obstacles ahead of us. I couldn't have put a better comrade, a tiny smirk appeared on Kiganovich's face. It is time uh, for the traitor's earnest to pay, all in due time, of course. May Stalin's vision bring prosperity to the entirety of Western Siberia, and one day all of Russia. The smirk had turned into a grin as Kiganovich's shouting took on a rare, jovial tone. Walking closer to each other, the two men shook hands firmly before pulling into a quick embrace. Afterwards, one of the aides in the room handed both men a glass of vodka to celebrate uh, their unity. However, in the back of both minds, they thought about how they might best uh, the other and take control when all was said and done. That was for the future, though. Now it's for celebration and unity. To the future goes the spoils. And so we wait. The smutted decision category will be disabled. We file the last remaining pieces of paperwork and uh, look out upon our country. It is clear with even a passing glance that there is much to be proud of. Both Gyanovich and Khrushchev have worked hard to unite the people and better their condition. All that remains is to march forward. Once West Siberia has been unified, we can begin discussing new questions, solving new problems, and determining how to bring our country into a new era. So I assume finishing this focus would give us the regional trade. As soon as we pick that, we keep the same name, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Form the West Side Group Republic. That's what we already are. New flag, though. Let us check this. It, it, it won't have changed, but. Now let us reload to that save, so that we might explore uh, Khrushchev's. Alright, we are back. Now, let me quickly guess. The battle is going again, because goddamn, that is an unreal song. Where is it? Here we are. Now, Khrushchev's focus. The sickle. Oh, they're butchering his name. That's hilarious. The sickle will embrace Khrushchev's vision of the five-year plan. This will ease a toll on agricultural strain, subtract civilian chaos minus 50. Khrushchev vision, uh, Khrushchev's vision has impressed much of the Congress, and they're ready to put his plan into action. Like Iganovich, Khrushchev understands the need for more industrialization, but also supports a more balanced approach involving civilian industry. In particular, Khrushchev favors mechanizing uh, farming equipment to increase crop, year crop yields. Crop 
and better feed the nation. Farmers will be collectivised and merged into large complexes. They will additionally be focused on longevity, while also retaining some of the influence of those who originally worked the land. Through this effort, we will ensure that famine may never affect the Soviet people ever again. I completely forgot to use the Air Force uh, against the Toost. Oops. Not that it really mattered too much. For the bounty of the land. Get them into a common response. The cost to complete the chance is affecting us. Mission will change by minus five physical power. Our agriculture will begin to improve. Kurgan gets one building slot and 10%, and we get 10% based ability. We do not labor for idle profits or for the betterment of elites. Our union seeks to break humanity from its primitive state and achieve scientific governance. It seeks to eradicate the bourgeois arrangements that prevent our society from reaching its true potential and to make bountiful those lands that were once fallow. We must act immediately on these pressing issues. We must mass, uh, we must, we must mass mechanize agriculture. We must collect the vines of farmers. We must treat the lands and ready the way for massive farming complexes that can make food acquisition more efficient. Only through this immediate, radical, and necessary action can our movement succeed. A common response. A dark and dreary night hung above West Russia on East, I mean West Siberia. On a small family farm in the middle of Tumen, crops stood in the fields waiting for the coming harvest. Uh, a few rare farm animals slept in the barn, basking in the peace of the night inside the house. A single lamp illuminated the table where the man of the farm sat. Ludmill arrested, holding a single piece of paper in his hands. It was a pamphlet that he picked up while in the nearby town getting supplies. The government issued stamp on the paper was something he had learned to mean trouble. Opening it up, he, uh, he beheld a recent genius coming out of the city. Prepare for the next greatest innovation in farming. The Ministry of Agriculture is here to announce the implementation of communal farms ready to collectivize and distribute all burdens and rewards equally among workers. This ingenious solution has been provided by the party's own Nikita Khrushchev. Oh. They rejected us this time, eh? A response from Bloken. Bloken and his men have refused our offer. This is an unfortunate outcome, but what shall prove only a minor setback for our military might. The harsh peaks of the northern Urals provide their only true defence. Behind the Vorkuda lies open for the taking, and take it we shall. No more half measures then, indeed. Be prepared for the future. What a complete load of horseshit. Ludmill thought to himself he had seen the effects of communal farms, and it always seemed to end with poor harvests and empty mouths. And without much thought, he tossed the pamphlet outside the window into the mud. Hopefully it would be more useful as compost. However, after thinking it over some more, Ludmill did find some useful Ludmill did find some useful information. After all, he now had a heads up that grain seizures would resume. His mind began to race with all the potential places he could hide grain. Under floorboards and pillowcases in the middle of the woods, anywhere his labour would be secure. He slept tensely on a pile of grain. Oh, it's our own people. It uh, gets about letting off steam, greatly increases minimal as well as maximal investment in social funding. Our poverty rate will uh, begin to slowly improve. We will spend 300 million. We do not. Oh no, no, no. I read some of it anyway.
Yeah, we do not labor for idle profit for the betterment of elites. Our movement seeks to realize the promise of public controlism for the common worker. It seeks to alleviate human suffering to address public ills. As Marx himself wrote, we seek to achieve a world that will be for the common people, one where the sounds of happiness will reach the deepest springs and rouse people in every land. We must be gentle and understanding as we address these issues. The state must extend aid to farmers and laborers. It must provide education and welfare. It must make itself a trusted institution in the eyes of the masses. For without them, we have very little. Now, letting off steam. An early sunset in Tumen had turned the sky pitch black shortly before the work bell's release in the hustle uh, in the end. The hustle of the early darkness, Kita Khrushchev pushed his way into his office after a long day. He tore off his coat and made his way to his large leather chair behind his desk. Reclining in a seat, he let out the stress of the day in a large sigh. The work and bickering were always tiring and seemed to go nowhere. In a sudden rush of frustration, Khrushchev pulled open a drawer in his desk and carefully removed a small wooden box inside. Had it from years of use, the picture contained the image of a younger man smiling in a service uniform. The wings of a Soviet pilot marked his hat below a larger sigil sigil of the party. Khrushchev faintly smiled, uh, holding the picture of his son Leonid in front of him. Tears began to trickle down his face. How he missed his little boy. He was always full of energy and wit when with his parents. When he said he was going to join the Air Force, Khrushchev had been proud. If he had known he would die in the Great Patriotic War, he would have maybe tried to stop him. By now, the trickle of tears had turned into a cascade as Khrushchev's reminiscence had turned into a full-on flashback. However, now was not the time to, to be stuck in the past of Leonid. Were here now, he would have made fun of Khrushchev for the way he was acting. After all, he had work to do and he was only able to do it thanks to the sacrifices of young men like his son. Um, his work would not be useless, regardless of the jabs by those around him. Putting the picture back in the box, Khrushchev wiped his tears away before muttering something, your death will not be in vain. Well, that's nice. I like that event. That's humanizing. Now, live among wolves. We'll embrace Khrushchev's vision, Khrushchev's vision of the five-year plan. This will ease a toll on agricultural strain. Um, replace Kaganovich's influence plan with a combined vision. Effective change, daily physical power gain minus 0.1. Monthly population plus 3%. Stability plus 10%. Production efficiency cap minus 2%. Division attack and defense plus 5% each. Gain base stability plus 40%. Very nice. Uh, th th that was all largely the same, though. Apart from the 40% thing, I don't think. I think that might have been war support, or what? was it something else? I don't think it was stability. It might have been, though. A defensive force is the obvious answer to this question. After all, how can we spread the revolution abroad if we cannot guarantee it at home? We, uh, will we open the city gates to allow invaders in unmolested? Will we sacrifice the heart of the new Soviet Union for vain glories and foolhardy conquests? Clearly going on the offensive is absurd. Comrade Khrushchev has laid out a masterful argument against this folly. Under his leadership, we will reorient our military towards defensive doctrines that can protect what we have. Then retaliate. It might not lead to the grand conquest envisioned by some, but, it, but it's a safer strategy for you. Yeah, I like Kaganovich's plan way more when it comes to the whole what offensive or defensive. We need to go on the offensive everywhere. Not everywhere. Everywhere eventually, but not all the time. But yeah, it seems that as long as you're going with, um, as long as you're sticking with either Holy Kaganovich or Holy or Holy Khrushchev, then um, then things will go well. I, I imagine if we had tried to split which um, which you know which one we preferred, either Kaganovich or Khrushchev, then the uh, national spirit wouldn't be as good. Maybe we get the same thing either way. I don't know.
так точно. of the beginning. Switch to be deployed because of the railroads? I think it might be. It's unfortunate. The merchants traded the rope on which they are now hanged, yes, the famous quote. One event that I never did like is the event where you have to choose between taking the amenities, taking the fuel, or taking the weapons. Like, surely, you can just, you know, just make multiple trips and get it all in the end. You can choose which one you get first, maybe. That would make sense. Circled and deadified. Thank <laughs> you. 
are you doing over here? Back to Back to Lads, that is the exploration of the West Siberian People's Republic. Um, West, the West Siberian People's Republic's uh, Smarter Tree. I hope you enjoyed. If you <laughs> nearly bang on an hour, that's perfect. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what other Smarter Trees you would like to see explored, and I shall see you in the next one. See you then. Death of Hoo Hoo. Uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. I would say alright people, I don't know who he is. Oh, it says regardless of political class. Did it? Something about that? Hailed by many as... As the father of the Republic of India. Ha! <laughs> we have received an ultimatum for the AB. Time to die. <laughs> Time for Konyev to stomp the Nat Sox again. Well, alright, I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.